Hi folks, this is just a really short video that I made in response to a comment that came forward in our discussion for this week. And it's part of what I usually include in the class, but which I hadn't included in the videos. So what it's addressing is this statement by Gracie. She says, I think what helps to hold relationships together, I asked what was, what did you think the glue was that held a relationship together when infatuation was over? Infatuation is a brain state that we know can only last somewhere between 18 and 22 months in length. And so when that's over, when people are no longer gaga over one another, what will hold the relationship together? And Gracie said, I think that what helps to hold relationships together is a person's desire to know and be known. So this yearning to know and be known, this is something very real, and we're this extremely social creature. This is well documented through the social sciences and even through the hard sciences. So this is what I use. Most of you have seen Shrek, I assume. And there's this place in Shrek where uh, Shrek is trying to explain something to the donkey. So Mike Myers is speaking to Eddie Murphy, try to hit the characters that they're, they're portraying. And he's trying to explain something to him about what it means to be an ogre. And he says, ogres are complicated. They have layers. They're like onions. Later on, the donkey will call him Onion Boy. But I think that there's something to that. So this is not Freud with the id and the ego and the superego. I'm not in any way deprecating that. This is much less complex than that. So this is my diagram, Bill's anthropology, you could call this, uh, or Bill's uh, picture of what goes on relationally with human beings. So imagine yourself like the onion that Shrek has described. And the outer skin is where a lot of our interaction with strangers goes on. So I go to Starbucks, let's say, and I get a coffee. And I say to the lady, as she's handing me the coffee out the window, how are you? And she says, I'm fine, how are you? And I say, you know, we both say, fine. We really don't care how the, how the other person is doing. We don't know them at all. And so a lot of our just interacting with human beings is very superficial like that. But then as we move in, in towards the center or the core of the human being, I'll just use an example of somebody who I've seen at Husson since I first came there. I came in 2012, and there's a fellow who works on the grounds crew and on the um, on housekeeping who I run into. Oftentimes, he's cleaning the building when I come in there because I come in there early. And I say hello to him, and he says hello to me, and we say much the same thing I would have said if I were coming up to the window at Starbucks. But one morning when I asked him how he was, he said, not so good. And he had the, his daughter was having a health problem. And so I didn't even know the guy's name, but I was somebody who we'd, we'd said hello to each other for enough times across the years that he brought that up to me. Not, I've had similar kinds of things go on with a fellow over in Wiley's Cafe. We've discussed things. I don't know his first name. I forget. I've heard it once before. But those kind of people, we're not complete strangers, but we really don't know one another. And then as we move further in, there's people who we regularly interact with, and we know for a lot of you guys, it'll be the people that are in the same major as you are at Husson. And so you regularly relate to them. Some of those folks are your buddies, but I'm not talking about your buddies. I'm talking about the folks that you just see by virtue of being in the same, the same major together with them. And professors would fit into this category as well. Anybody who you have regular interaction with, maybe it's a, even a roommate, but you're not close to this roommate, you have regular interaction with them, but you're not close to them. Still, you would care if something happened to them. And then we start moving into real friends, your circle of friends from high school, and your circle of friends, if you have a circle of friends, here at Husson. The people that you're close to, those of you who are in long-term relationships with people, I don't mean romantic relationships, um, across time, somebody from your sports team when you're growing up, all those sorts of things, kids you grew up with in school, and so on. Uh, these are people who would be that closer circle of friends, the peer group, and so on. And then we move into the realm of people that you have chosen and you have selected and you want them to be in your life and you enjoy their company and you choose to spend time with them. And also into this circle would go family, your siblings, your parents. These are people with whom you're super close and whom you love being with and who if something were to happen to them, it would just totally disrupt your world. But every one of us craves to be able to have a relationship with a human being in which we won't have to wear any masks, there won't have to be any facades. I can just be me, completely me, and know that they care about and love me for who I am. That they know who I am, they know me warts and all, so to speak. 
I know all my foibles, all my weird characteristics, all my eccentricities. We all have eccentricities, by the way. There's nobody who's normal. And they love me in spite of those things. And so I just don't have to fake. I can just be completely myself. I can let my hair down, as the saying goes, with this person. For that person, there's really only one. And when you have that sexual intimacy combines with relational intimacy, such that the nakedness of your body matches the nakedness of your heart, your mind, your soul, as it were, before that other person, then you have what we all crave. We crave to be able to share our life completely with another person and trust them. But it's also a vulnerable thing, because if you share yourself at that level and you reject it at that level, that's about the most painful hurt you could possibly experience, that you're not just sharing bodies, but you're also sharing hearts and lives. So I, I want to say that that's something that I believe all of us longs for ultimately, an intimate partner with whom we can completely share our hearts and our minds and not have to pretend or have any pretense. So this is a uh, video from the, uh, of a movie with Richard Gere and J-Lo and Susan Sarandon. In the movie, Richard Gere is married to Susan Sarandon and he's getting close to retirement years and he wants to spend more time with his wife and he's feeling very romantic towards her but she doesn't seem to have any time for him. She's always going out with ladies groups and saying, here, make supper for yourself. She's always out shopping. She's always doing things that take her away from him. And so he starts to get a little um, rejected feeling. And he's riding on the train and he sees this dance class going on and he sees J-Lo at the window. And one gets the impression early on that he's interested romantically in her. But ultimately what it turns out to be is that what he wants to do is he wants to be able to dance with his wife, to dance really well with his wife. So he goes and takes dance lessons. So Susan Sarandon is now wondering, why is my husband not around in the evenings when he used to be around while I was out doing all these things? So she doesn't directly ask him what's going on. Instead, she hires a private detective. And she meets together with a private detective when he's bringing his report. And what he does is he tells her, well, he's taking this dance class. And what you get the impression of from the encounter that takes place between the detective and her is that they're going to have an affair, basically in order to get even with the affair that she thinks is going on on her husband's part. That is clearly what most of my students who've seen this movie have said. They thought the two of them were going to have an affair. I mean, notice the low-cut dress that she's wearing in order to meet with a, a, a detective. And so... We thought it was kind of a romantic get-together. All my students in the past and myself as well, that this was a romantic meeting. It's not. So she um, is having her conversation with him and discovers her husband's taking this dance class. And she says, why is it do you think that people get married? And Divine is the name, the last name of the fellow who's the, uh, the detective. And he says, passion. And she says, no. He says, that's interesting because I would have taken you for a romantic. And so have all of my students and myself. We all thought that there was something going to happen romantically between the two of them. But here's what she says. She says, no, because we need a witness to our lives. There's a billion people on the planet. Actually, there's almost eight billion at this point in time. There's seven plus billion. So there's a billion people on the planet. I mean, what does any one life really mean? We're teeny tiny, is what she's saying. We're small. They're, no matter who we are, our lives are seemingly insignificant in terms of numbers. But in a marriage, she says, you're promising to care about everything. The good things, the bad things, the, the terrible things, the mundane things, all of it, all the time, every day. You're saying, by being married, your life will not go unnoticed because I will notice it. Your life will not go unwitnessed because I will be your witness. I think that's profound, and I think that is something that we all crave, to have somebody who will be aware that we've been here. Like us, they're mortal and they're passing, but we will have shared the passage of our life through the years with this individual. So coming back to, to that statement, I will be your witness, that brings us full circle back to Gracie's comment. I think what helps to hold relationships together is a person's desire to know and be known. That's probably not an exhaustive answer, but I think it's a very satisfying and accurate answer. And we'll end there.